So cosine x times secant x equals one. So first of all, let me just kind of say that when you're verifying trig identities, the nice thing is, is that they give you the answer. So we know that this equals one, we just have to show step by step or verify or prove that the left side equals the right side. Now what you wanna do when you're verifying trig identities, ideally, is you just wanna work with one side of the equation, either the left side or the right side, and leave the other side alone. And you just wanna do uh, identical substitution, so identities mean, mean that they're identical, right? But you can substitute identical quantities and simplify it until you can show that both sides are equivalent. So I'll show you what I mean in these examples and you'll get a better idea. So this first one, cosine of x times secant of x equals one. Well, we know that secant of x is the reciprocal of cosine of x. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that identical substitution. I'm just substituting or swapping them out. And now I can see that these cosines are gonna cancel and I'm left with one over one, which equals one. So one equals one check okay so we proved it that was an easy one let's get into some more challenging ones though let's take a look at this one here secant squared x minus tangent squared x over 1 minus cosine squared x we're trying to show that it equals cosecant squared x now just a little side note over here you probably remember this Pythagorean trig identity 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared now you can rearrange that trig identity by you know, subtracting, okay, so we're gonna take secant squared, we're gonna subtract tangent squared, and if we move that to the side, you can, say, you can see that secant squared minus tangent squared equals one, right? So this numerator is equal to one, and then the same thing with this denominator. If you remember the Pythagorean trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, that's the basic Pythagorean trig identity, one minus cosine squared, if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, you can see that that's gonna equal sine squared. So I'm gonna replace that with sine squared x. And we know that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, but since this is squared, this is gonna be equal to cosecant squared x. And so there you go, you've proved it. Okay, let's go on to another example. So are you with me so far? You just wanna keep doing those substitutions. Notice I'm working with the more expanded side, the larger side, usually it's the left side, and I'm trying to condense it down until that I can show step by step that it equals the right side. So let's take a look at this example. Now tangent of x I know is uh, what? It's sine over cosine, right? So sine x over cosine x. And then over here we have cosine x over one. Okay, and so I'm just gonna simplify down a little bit more. This is sine squared x over cosine x, okay? But now over here, I just have cosine x over one, right? Now, I can see from the right side that this is just like one term, it's just one quantity. Over here, I have two quantities separated by the addition sign. I wanna combine those together or condense it into one term. So the, the obvious thing I think to do here would be to get the common denominators. And I'm gonna do that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by cosine of x. So if we do that, we're gonna get cosine squared x over cosine x plus sine squared x over cosine x. But since they have the same denominator, I'm just gonna combine them into one fraction, okay? Sine squared plus cosine squared we talked about is one. So this is gonna be uh, one over cosine x, which equals secant x, and we proved it. So. Let's take a look at another example. Now, one thing I want to mention is, you know, as you're doing these, you're going to want to memorize some of the basic um, Pythagorean trig identities and some of the basic identities because you're going to be using them all the time. And if the more that you know them and memorize them, the more they're going to jump off the page at you. But let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. So this one is a little bit more challenging. We've got sine of a negative angle. Sine of a negative angle is the same as uh, the opposite of sine of the positive angle, okay? And you can see these two negatives are gonna cancel, so that becomes one plus sine of x. Numerator is still cosine of x. Now, what I'm gonna do here might not be so obvious at first glance, but I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So instead of one plus sine of x, I'm gonna multiply by one minus sine of x. I'm gonna foil this out, so the denominator is one minus sine squared of x. Okay, because you can see the inside and outside are gonna cancel and you're gonna get one and then negative sine squared of x. And the numerator I'm just gonna leave as cosine x times one minus sine x. Okay, so I'm not gonna distribute that. One minus sine squared x, again, here comes that Pythagorean trig identity again, one minus sine squared of x, I'm subtracting sine squared from both sides, that equals cosine squared. Okay, cosine squared. So we have cosine x 
over one minus sine x over cosine squared x. One of these cosines cancels with one of these. And now you can see we have one minus sine x over cosine x. I'm gonna split this up into two fractions, one over cosine x minus sine over cosine x. And you know that one over cosine or the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So there's our secant x. And sine over cosine is tangent x. So we proved it. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but what you want to do, because it's an identity, you already know the answer. So you want to keep your eye on you know, the right side or the left side of the equation because you know where you want to take this. So you can kind of you know, garner some hints from looking at that other side of the equation and, and kind of steer your decisions about what types of substitutions you might want to do. Sometimes when you're doing this, there can be a lot of steps and you might feel that maybe you, you know, run yourself into a corner and you get stuck. Just go ahead and back up a few steps, try some different uh, substitutions and try taking the problem a slightly different way. Uh, as long as you keep substituting equivalent quantities, you know, it might just take you a few extra steps. You'll still get to what, where you want to go. It just might take a little bit longer. Let's look at this last example and then we'll wrap up this video. This one here we haven't talked about yet. These are the co-functions. Cosine of 90 minus x or pi over 2 minus x, this is equal to the sine of x. Okay, so cosine and sine are co-functions, tangent and cotangent, secant and cosecant. So this is equivalent to sine of x. Cotangent of x is equal to cosine over sine. And you can see that the sines are gonna cancel. And so we have cosine x equals cosine x, and we proved it. So I hope this video helps you understand how to work with uh, verifying trig identities a little bit better. Check out uh, the other videos that I'll have links to about some of the other videos I did uh, regarding the same topic. And uh, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the future videos and I look forward to helping you with your math. So I'll talk to you soon.